So good to uh, have you out here on a stampede Sunday morning. How many have been stampeding? Four of you. Good. <laughs> I don't like that place. I just like, I like the fact I get to wear cowboy hats. Come on. I know it's next week, but I'm almost 60 years old. If I want to wear a cowboy hat, I'm wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> Plus, it gives me a little more height advantage and get to wear the boots to go with it. Awesome. You know, we went, uh, took a bunch of men fly fishing down in Montana. Wait, I should say catching. We weren't fishing. Well, I was catching. Uh, somebody want to ask me who caught the most fish? Oh, yes. Well, since you asked, I wasn't going to say it because I'd be bragging. You should have seen the one that got away. It was amazing. It was like, uh, it was big. Anyway, uh, while we were fishing, it was just a great opportunity, a bunch of guys. And uh, one of the men that came with us, he, we were just talking, and he dropped a phrase that it just kind of went off in my spirit. He said, you know, we're born to win, but we're programmed to lose. You ever thought about that? Born to win, but programmed to lose. And I, I know I've been talking about in the last number of weeks about uh, the renewing of our mind and what voices are you listening to and letting God change you through changing your thinking. And so I just felt I had one more message that I want to share on this before next week when I start teaching on the book of Acts. We're going to go through a little bit of Acts over the summer. And uh, we're going to start with Acts chapter 1, and we're going to be talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit next Sunday. And so I encourage you to come, but don't just come, come hungry. But today I want to teach on that message, born to win, program to lose. So Father, we come before you with open hearts and open minds, ready to receive what you have for us today. God, your word is true. Your word is alive. Your word is powerful. Thank you for its potential to absolutely change and transform, revolutionize somebody's inner world today. Holy Spirit, I need you to speak through me. I rely upon your grace today. And Jesus, we're so thankful that you promised that you speak to your sheep and they hear, their, and they hear your voice. So Lord, thank you for touching our ears, touching our hearts, and for allowing us to hear your voice. And everybody said, Amen. Awesome. Born to win, programmed to lose. Okay. You know, have you ever noticed that when you read the scriptures, there's some great promises there of the overcoming, abundant life of God, you know, the joy, the peace, the, the kingdom, and then sometimes there's a disconnect where we're like, I don't know if I'm really experiencing the overcoming life. I don't know if I'm experiencing. I mean, here's what the word promises, but my experience is down here. And so what often happens is, well, we accept this as normal, and so we lower our understanding of the Scriptures, and so that we live down here. Today's not going to be one of those messages. Today is, not, is going to be the message of, well, this is what the Word promises, and this is where my, my personal experience is right now, but how do we do, take this experience and bring it up so it's reflecting what the Word is saying? So that's where we're going today. Are you with me? Awesome. So, born to win, program to lose. How many have ever bought a new computer? Okay. Well, five of you. That's awesome. The rest of you, you should, you know, quit using the tablet and the, the chisel and the hammer like Fred Flintstone. They have these things now called computers. You can use them. They're great. I had this one laptop many, many years ago. And uh, I guess it had some viruses. It had some broken code. Maybe it had some malware. But it just wasn't working great. It didn't have much of a hard drive. And so I went and bought a brand new laptop. And it was so excited. And then I didn't know what to do with it, how to migrate everything over. And so anyway, I had someone help me. And we put one cable from the old into the new and everything came into the new computer. I thought, wonderful. Now all my problems are solved. But when they migrated the software, which was corrupted, into the old hard drive, how I many know, even though I had the new, latest, most powerful hard drive, I still had the old programs, I still had the old broken codes, the viruses, the malware, and it still didn't work. Anybody have that experience? No, because you're smart. You hired somebody to migrate your, no, I didn't do that. And so, but this is a kind of a picture of what happens in the life of a believer. Because when you came to Christ, a miracle happened. You were born of God. You received a new nature. The Bible says that whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. 
the very first ingredient described of faith is that it, it's, it's, it's overcomes. And so that's what you're born of. When you're born of God, you got the nature of God on the inside of us. First Peter says that we are partakers of the divine nature. You are a partaker of the divine nature. Something of God came into your spirit. That's your nature. You are born to win. You're born of God. You're born to overcome. Come on. You're born to reign in life. Unfortunately, you got the old software running, which is programmed to lose. Or is it this hand? How, how many could how many understand what I'm saying? So we're gonna we're gonna dive into this because this is this is the key verse. This is the key verse of beginning to experience this new life that God gave you. So do not be conformed. It's Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to this world. Listen, the world wants to squeeze you into a mold. The devil wants you to, you know, he wants to squeeze and put pressure on you to live a certain way, to live below your capacity, live far below your potential. He wants you to believe his lies. He doesn't want you to live the overcoming abundant life. He doesn't want you to believe that you're blessed. He doesn't want to believe that you're completely forgiven and loved by God. He doesn't want you to believe that good things can happen to you. He doesn't want you to believe that you are accepted and loved in Christ. Puts that pressure on you, form you, conform, forms you with lies. Jesus said, if you're my disciple, you'll abide, you'll abide in my word, and you'll know the truth when you abide in the word, and the truth will set you free. The tr it's not just truth, the truth that you know and act on, you'll experience the freedom. So this is the battle that's going on. And he says, but be transformed, experience an inner re revolution, a transformation, how? By the renewing of your mind. Everyone say renewing of your mind. You see, that, that's the key to experiencing the fullness of the life of Christ is you've got to renew your mind. Listen, there is no transformation in your life outside of renewing your mind with the truth of God's Word. Oh, I'm going to go to preacher so-and-so. He's got a powerful anointing. I don't care how powerful his anointing is. If you don't renew your mind, it's not going to help you. Well, if I fast for 40 days and give a big offering, that'll be... No, transformation, according to the Scriptures, comes by the renewing of your mind. How many are with me this morning? Okay, you follow this. this is what, and then it says, so that you may prove what the will of God is. Listen, God's got a will. He's got a desire and a t an intention for you. And it is good. It's acceptable and perfect. God has a better way for you and I to live. Come on, God's plan for your life is better than your own. God's plan for your life is bigger than your own. And until you renew your mind, you're not going to know this. See, so many people I, I meet, and say, well, you know, they get sick. God's teaching me something it's because they haven't renewed their mind, right? They're, they're, not, they're not in the Scriptures. Listen, God can use anything to work in your life, but it doesn't mean it's God's will. And so a lot of, see, it's possible to be born of God, to have heaven as your destination, but you can experience hell on earth. And see, a lot of people think that, that heaven is the goal. Come on, heaven is the byproduct. Jesus spoke very little about going to heaven. He spoke a lot about experiencing heaven on earth. In fact, he taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Come on, what are we made of? earth, on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants you to experience heaven on earth. Wow! He came preaching the good news of the kingdom and he said the kingdom of God is near you. The kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? It's within reach. Well, what is the kingdom? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what God wants you to experience is righteousness, Peace, that passes understanding, and joy, which is your strength, in the Holy Spirit. That's the overflowing life that we're supposed to be experiencing. So how do we get there? All right, so we're going we're gonna to just unpack some scriptures here. Uh, by the way, I've discovered something. Did you know that you've never seen your face? No, you haven't. Listen, I, I mean, I, I've seen my nose, <laughs> and it's getting bigger. Not because I'm lying, but just because... I'm Italian. I can see my lips. <laughs> Come on, try it. See if you can see your lips. No, 
Now look at your neighbor and plant one on him. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I might, I might not know your neighbor. I'm sorry. I just thought it'd be funny. All right. But you've never seen, I've seen your face and you've seen my face. But I've never seen my face and you've never seen your face. You've seen a reflection of your face. You look in the mirror and for some of you, you wish that mirror was telling you a lie. But that mirror is just, so you're trusting that mirror that is revealing what you look like. You're trusting it. It might not be true. I know the mirrors that I look in make me look like 15 pounds too fat. Liar. Lying mirror. You're from the pit. Back to Walmart or wherever. I don't know. I don't know where I go. But you're trusting that mirror, aren't you? That mirror, hopefully, is showing what you look like on the outside. But uh, there's another mirror called the Scripture. Paul talks about looking steadfastly in the mirror. Now this mirror, this mirror, the Word of God, it reveals what I look like on the inside. So the natural mirror shows you what you look on the outside, but only this book can reveal what you look like on the inside. And what you look like on the inside is far more important than what you look like on the outside. So... Let's figure something out here. I want to this this little I want to talk to you about spirit, soul and body because if you can understand this it'll open up the scriptures in a whole new way for you. So Paul writes this, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you or set you apart entirely, completely. So he wants you to be completely set apart. That word to sanctify means to set apart for a higher purpose, right? And so and he says and may your spirit and soul and body. So this tells me that you're made up of spirit. Everyone say spirit your soul, and you are a body. Most of us are very body conscious, you know, and so, but we are, we are spirit, soul, and body. So we're, if, when we understand this, we're going to understand about how we can live the overcoming life of Jesus. And then he says that you be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to unpack this. So first of all, I, I think about, we need to understand what happened in our spirit. So this is one of my favorite verses, and it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He's a new creature. Everyone say new, a new creature. There's a lot of strange creatures, but you can be a new creature. And that word in the Greek means a new creation that never existed before. So when you became in Christ, you know what? You didn't join a church. You didn't join a denomination. You know, you didn't just, you know, join a club. When you are in Christ, when you receive Christ and He came to live on the inside of you, you experience the greatest of all miracles, one that is eternal. Listen, you could get healed in your body, but that's not eternal because one day you're still going to pass on. But that miracle of the new birth, it is the eternal miracle. It is the, it is the greatest of all miracles. And he says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Now, what part of you became the new creation? Well, listen, if you were, you know, if you were tall before you gave your life to Christ, you were tall after. If you were short, you're still going to be short. That's my story. And, uh, you know, it, 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 that your body didn't change. Well, your soul, your personality didn't change. Now, it begins, you get conformed to the image of Christ. But if you had a high IQ, when you, got, when you received Christ, you still had a high IQ. If you had a depression problem before, most likely you still had a depression problem. Your mind and personality stayed the same. That part didn't change. But the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. What part of me became a new creation? Well, I believe that that was the spiritual part of me, my spirit, the eternal part, the part that is made in the image of God. And then he says, all things are passed away. So not only was your history wiped clean off the hard drive, but it says old things passed away. Listen, your old history, your old identity was passed away. And then it says, behold, this is where, this is where a lot of people miss it. To behold something is to set your gaze upon. God wants you to behold the new things, this new creation. He wants you to be familiar with who you really are by looking in God's mirror. And he says, new things have come, and now all these things are from God, from God, from, listen, what God did on the inside of you, you didn't join a club, you received a miracle, your spirit was dead in sins, became alive, and God's nature is in there, and you were born of God. Peter says, you're a partaker of the divine nature. The Bible says that if you've joined yourself to the Lord, you are one spirit. 
spirit with Jesus. What happened with your spirit? So let's, let's look at this diagram. Okay, you're a, you're a triune being. You've got a spirit, which is, makes you God conscious, a soul, which makes you self and other conscious, and your body, which is world conscious. Now, your body is, you know, interacts with the environment through the five senses, sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. And so this is how you interact with the natural world. You get information from here right? It's going to be hot today, and Wednesday's going to be 35 degrees, glorious. So you feel that information, and it goes into your processor. So here's your processor, which is your soul, which is the seat of your mind, will, emotions. You know, this is your personality. And so that information goes into here, and then this, you know, because you've got great mind, hmm, that means I get to wear shorts, and I better stay hydrated, drink lots of water, right? Turn on the AC, roll down the windows, whatever. And then because the sun is shining, and you're in Calgary, and it's hot, you're like, yahoo, finally summer has come. But then you kind of get sad because it only lasts for about a week. All right. And so this, so this is the soul is how you relate to people, right? You relate to others. You relate to yourself. But then there's the part of you, which is the eternal part of you, is your spirit. And that spirit is what interacts in the, the spirit world. Now, you were made to be connected to God, to talk with God, to walk with God, to be like God. Come on. You're made in God's class of being without being God. Hmm. And it says here, see, this is the part that you, now, when, what happens is when sin came, when sin came, the Bible says we died spiritually. In other words, we, we lost the God connection. Now, your spirit is still alive, but it's just not connected to the life of God. Are you following me? And so, because why, so that's why, you know, you go to some of these occult worlds and they have supernatural signs and wonders and, and, so, and you go to some of those, you know, psychic readers and sometimes they're like spot on. What is that? It's because their spirit is still active and they're receiving information from the spirit world, but it's not coming from the source of God. It's coming from false spirits, familiar spirits, and, you know, it's coming from the wrong side. And so, and so their spirit is still active. And so what happened when you got, uh, when you got born again is that the life of God, the Bible says that, the, that uh, in, in Ephesians, it says, let me get you the scripture, I think it's verse 5, it says that uh, even when we were dead in our sins, Christ, he made us, God made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. In uh, 1 John 5, 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, this is the victory. And so when you got, remember what Jesus said, Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, comes to see Jesus, and Jesus said to him, listen, you must be born again. Listen, you enter this world by being born physically, but you got to be born spiritually. And so Nicodemus says, Jesus, how is it supposed to be? Can a man of my age get back into my mother's womb? And, and Jesus said to him, he said, truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. So then he says, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. You need a spiritual rebirth. So when you gave your life to Christ, this, this part of you that was dead and disconnected became brand new. So the shame, the guilt, the darkness was all swept away. And Christ came to live in your spirit. And, and you are a partaker of the divine nature. If you look in the mirror, God's mirror, you're going to see that you're more than a conqueror. That you're blessed with every spiritual blessing. That Christ lives in you. That you're an overcomer. That's who you are on the inside. You are unstoppable, irresistible, overflowing with the life of God. And what happens is most of us forget that we don't upgrade, we don't update our, our, our operating system. We're still trying to, we got this new life on the inside, but we got the old stinking thinking, the old way of thinking. So what we got to do is get a new operating system, right? Update with the new information and put it in here so it can sync properly and be in line with what the reality of what God's done on the inside of us. Woo! You start operating like that, you're walking in peace, you're walking in unity, you're walking in strength, you're walking in the life of Christ. Why? Because that is the true who you really are. The Bible talks about the carnal man. What's a carnal man? So a carnal man is what I described in the very beginning. You got the new hard drive, but you got the old operating system, and you're experiencing the same failure, the same defeat, the same depression. You got all those same things going on. Because what happens in our soul, because Paul said to the Corinthians, why are you still so carnal? It doesn't mean they're just fleshy and going after the latest lust of the flesh. It means that they're still thinking like a mere man. That's what he says. You're thinking like a mere man. 
<laughs> but I, I am a human. Yeah, but you should be thinking like a superhuman. You should be thinking about, you should be thinking like somebody who's received the life of God. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. So this I say and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles walk. So, so the Ephesians were walking like the, like the Gentiles. And the Gentile means someone who's not walking in the life of God for all intents and purposes. Walk, he says, don't walk in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. So you can have this life of God on the inside. Look at that. The fullness of Christ, complete salvation, the life of God, peace, faith, your inheritance. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings, accepted in the beloved. You've been made holy and righteous. You are complete. You're born of God. you got sonship. See, this part of you, when you received Christ, was completely saved once and for all. This part of you can never die. Once saved, always saved. For the devil to steal your salvation, he's going to have to wade through the blood of Jesus, break the seal of the Holy Spirit, which he can't. He's going to have to pluck you out of Jesus' hand, remove the spirit of adoption from you, then pluck you out of the Father's hand. Listen, by the time he wades through the blood, he's going to be calling you brother. When the Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, it doesn't stop there, by the way. For it is he who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. What is that saying? It's not talking about this is the finished work. This part of you was saved. It's done. Woo! Come on, you can't add to it and you can't take away from it. That's who you really are. So when the Bible says to work out your salvation, it's this part of you. Right? Because the Bible says there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's done. But what happens is, in our soul, we got the old program that's got viruses. It's got malware, spyware. I don't care. It's got all kinds of wares in there. And what happens is, it's a, and here we got all these insecurities, the feelings of inferiority, inadequacy, anxieties, hurts. There's past history. We got these filters that go on in here, and, and all these fears and guilt and shame and lies. This is the part of us that is being saved. Now, your body will be saved one day. Your body's coming out of the grave, and it's going to be resurrected and glorified, and it will never die again. And you get to eat and not get fat. Okay, I'm adding that part to the Scriptures, but I kind of believe that. I think we're going to eat when we go to heaven. I'm convinced of it. Because we're going to go to the marriage feast, not the marriage famine, the marriage feast of the Lamb. We are going to eat in heaven. It's going to be, well, because heaven's going to be on the earth. There's going to be a new earth. So I think there's going to be trees. I think there's going to be animals and fruits and all kinds of great stuff. And pasta with no carbs. It's going to be amazing. And actually, it's going to be carb-free pasta that tastes good. Not this crap you buy. I mean, I'm not going to go there. So this is, this is the way. So this is the area. Be renewed, right? You know, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? It means I address these issues by acknowledging this part. Because this is my real identity. This is my messed up identity. I want to get this part healed. I want to work on this part. But this is not who I really am. This is who I really am. In Romans, for those who walk according to the flesh. Okay, what's my flesh? This part of me. This is, flesh can be an identity. Flesh doesn't mean just lustful desires. See, because see, they were ignorant of the life of God that's in them through the darkness of their mind. The mind. So, when you set your mind on this part, okay, he says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So, if I forget about this, if I'm alienated, listen, if I'm darkened in my mind about that, I'm ignorant to what that really is, my mind is darkened and I walk alienated. I don't get to enjoy the life of God. The God kind of life. The overflowing life. The victorious life. And so what happens then is, so this part here is called the flesh. So if I set my mind on this, the Bible says that I begin to experience death. Come on. If I believe that this is my identity, 
I'm, I'm a, just an insecure person. I'm just inferior. I'm just inadequate. I'm just a victim. I'm just, I'm, oh, I'm just, you know. And if I focus on all this, listen, I'll tell you how you can overcome this because the scriptures tell us in Romans 8, Paul says, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit mm, is life and peace. So what I need to do is take this part of me and I need to set it over here. Because this is the real me. This is, this is where I'm working. Come on. Are you with me? Are you following this? So let's look at what do we do. Let me give you some practical steps real quick. Number one, stop waiting for an outside miracle to change your minds. All right. Sometimes, you know, like in, especially in more the charismatic world or spirit-filled world, whatever you want to call it, you know, we over, we, we, we're looking for something sensational, you know, to, to happen that's going to make all my promises go away. Oh, if I could just get pastor to pray for me, if I just had 30 minutes with pastor, or if I just went to some, I had a special place where God was pouring out his spirit in my life. No, listen, l- listen, it's not going to happen from the outside in, it's going to happen from the inside out, okay? It's going to come from the inside out. You know, and so you first stop waiting for an outside miracle to change your mind. And the fact is renewing of the mind will never work if someone believes this excuse. The reason why my mind is so negative is because my life is so hard. And so what I want to challenge you to do is to start speaking the truth. Start declaring what God says about you. Start believing the truth about, you know, what's, what's happened on the inside of you. And so, you know, and, and as long as you think, well, you know, it, you know, my... My mind is so negative because my life is so hard. Listen, everybody, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of hardships. Oh, come on, we've all, we've all been there. And I don't want to minimize the pain that you're going through. I don't want to minimize what you're experiencing because I'm sure it's very horrific and harmful. But I, I'm not here just to affirm you in that place. I acknowledge that pain, but I want to help you to move from that place of being a victim and to being hurt to that place of healing. And so one of the things you have to recognize is this, is that, you know, uh, just because, you know, my mind is so near because my life is so hard, just because I have a, li- a, a, a hard life, it doesn't abdicate my responsibility from taking control of my thinking. You can't stop the birds from flying overhead, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. So number two, stop believing that you can't control your thoughts. You know, it's interesting, you know, the Bible commands us, you know, Paul said to think about these things. What? He said, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So what are we going to do? We got to start choosing. We got to start, you know, because we can all have this filter that just how we interpret things, right? I could put on a pair of green sunglasses and everything looks green. But it doesn't mean everything is green, but that's my filter. And we can have these negative filters because of how people have treated us and what we've believed and what we've experienced. And and that's all we see. But God wants you to put on a different pair of glasses. He he wants you to to begin to see things through His perspective. He wants you to put on these ones. And so you begin to see things through a new filter, the real filter. Because there's a lot of trick filters out there. Look at your Instagram and people look and all of a sudden they got a dog's face. And, you know, they got ears or their head face turns into a big horse. And there's a lot of false filters out there. And kids start screaming as they're looking in the Instagram and their mom's face turns into a horse. And the, kid, the kids are, or spiders are crawling out of there. Have you seen that one of the spiders? That one is horrible. Especially when you hate spiders. People are smacking their face because they think there's a spider crawling out of their nostril who thinks of stuff like that demonized people that's who thinks of stuff like that but how many know it's not true it's not true is it it's a false filter maybe what you're believing about yourself is a false filter maybe you're not defective maybe you're not a throwaway Maybe you're not second class. Maybe you are who God says you are, his child, and blessed with every spiritual blessing. Again, what do you listen? Meditate on these things. Boy, to be spiritually minded, to set your mind on these things is what? Life and peace. The last point, number three, confess what you believe. And not what you feel. Listen, I, I listen. I I understand. You honestly feel those feelings. I feel those feelings too. We all do. 
But you know, I've just decided that those feelings aren't the truth, but they just tell me truly what I'm believing. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to use those feelings as a guide to find out, well, what am I believing? You're in the presence of somebody and they say things and they make you feel inferior. You know, so you feel that inferiority, you feel that inadequacy, you, you feel like you're a screw up. So what do I do? I take it to the word of God. What does the word of God teach me? Well, the word of God, you know, it says that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm valuable to God. Come on. Christ paid the ultimate price. He died for you. Why? Because he loved you. Because he wanted you. He values you. So I start taking every one of those thoughts captive like we learned the other week. And I bring them into the obedience of Christ. I measure them up. Is that what God says about me? Absolutely not. That's why it's so important every day to be in the scriptures. You know, especially the in him realities. And that's why I wrote a little devotional. It's available at the cafe. And uh, where it's just going all this just it's to reestablish that identity, who you are in Christ, who you are in Christ, who Christ is in you. It's about the spiritual reality because that's present and that's the truth. Mm. So c- confess what you believe, not what you feel. For I, I love this verse, Mark 11, 23 and 24. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says, look at this, says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Look, says one, two, three, believing once. Believing is mentioned once. Speaking is mentioned three times. Why is that? Because connected to your believing, you've got to put a whole lot of speaking. You've got your heart needs to hear your mouth speak what God says about you. So when you feel so bound and like such a loser and you feel like you've messed up, that's where you open up your mouth and declare what God says about you. Because that's the truth. How did, listen, how did Jesus defeat the devil? Well, he was praying and hoping and a No, he wasn't praying. He defeated the devil by speaking. He opened his mouth because the, the, the spoken word is the sword of the spirit. Are you following? I, I, I like this other verse. It's not in your notes, but 2 Corinthians 4.13. And since we have the same spirit of faith, I like that. Faith is a spirit, guys. Faith is not a product of mind, you know, mind over matter, positive thinking. Faith is a spirit. Faith, everyone say spirit. Faith is a spirit. And, it's, and, it, and it says here that uh, um, since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, I believed, I believed. I said, I'm not, a, I'm not believing. I believed. Past tense. Settled issue. <laughs> I believed. What God said about me, therefore I spoke. Too many people don't get to that place of settled faith. They start speaking. No, let it meditate on the inside of you. I believe, therefore I spoke. Begin to speak and declare what God says about you. Amen. Come on, worship team. Come on up here. Did you get something out of this today? You are born to win. And now you're going to be programmed to win because you start declaring what God says about you. Because you start looking in a different mirror.